Hey friends, so Ableton just came out with MicroTuner, a really spicy device that can add just so much flavor to your music. If you're a fan of Aphex Twin and have always wondered how he makes his music sound so wrong, but so right, it's due to a process in which he took certain notes and retuned them slightly, resulting in music that sounds hyper original, almost drunk, but it conveyed so much more emotion than the conventional tuning that literally every musician in the West uses. With MicroTuner, Ableton has now granted you this superpower, and this one little device could change your music forever. So ever since music was made and written down, humans have always been grappling with the fact that no matter how you slice it or dice it, there's no perfect way to divide an octave into exact harmonic notes where each chord has perfect harmony. This is why there are so many different tunings throughout the world, such as the Arab or Indian tuning systems. These scales are so different that the instruments used to play the leads don't even have fixed pitches, such as like a violin or a sitar. Now, I'm not gonna get into this here because this subject is so deep and amazing that it deserves a whole series of videos on it alone, but I really like and recommend the book called The Quadrivium, which is an amazing book that links all of human perception together using math and has a really cool chapter on music. Our western scale of 12 notes that we've been using since the 18th century is called Equal Temperament. It's very powerful because it allows a lot of different kinds of instruments with fixed pitches to be played together, like the piano and the guitar, or like an orchestra. But some aficionados of the alternate tuning systems of the East go as far as to say that certain emotions and musical expressions aren't even possible to convey using the equal temperament scale. Now, regardless of whether or not that's true, Ableton's MicroTuner now allows us to retune our instruments to reach new and odd vibes with our music and really differentiate our sounds. MicroTuner may seem complicated, but I'm gonna give you a bunch of practical workflow tips that you can use to quickly make new sounds and differentiate your music. Let's dive in. Okay, so here's MicroTuner, and I wanna show you something really quick before I play it. This MicroTuner is controlling all the other MicroTuners in my set, so if I look at this MicroTuner, it's following it. If I look at this MicroTuner, it's following just this one. Now, I'll show you how to set that up here in just a moment, but the first thing I wanted to do is just play for you an example of the difference between playing this song with its just classic equal temperament tuning, which you're used to using, and then playing a microtonal scale that sounds a little bit different, all right? So let's go ahead and listen to it with just the equal temperament tuning, which the slider being up here is what that sounds like. Right? So that's just what it would normally sound like. That's what an equal temperament tuning sounds like. Now check this out. I'm going to slide the slider down here to this microtonal scale that I've made and take a listen to the difference. <laughs> now, to me, that is just so much more interesting to listen to. It's a little strange, and it's just got its own character and its own flavor. Okay, so the first thing to understand about MicroTuner is that it's using pitch bend information, okay? In order for this to work properly, you have to tell MicroTuner what kind of instrument it's being fed into, okay? So at the moment, I'm feeding MicroTuner into an MPE-enabled device, Ableton Wavetable, right? So what that means is that I can essentially play chords that are microtuned away from each other, right? So when I play this wavetable, with each note that I'm playing, it's sending pitch bend information to each one of those notes and retuning them slightly. So it sounds like this, instead of this. Hear the difference there? So. What's going on with this is that you have to tell MicroTuner what the pitch bend range is of each one of your devices. Now, if you look at Wavetable and you go to the MPE tab, you can see that the pitch is already set, the pitch bend range is already set to 48. So when you load up a Wavetable and you load up a MicroTuner, it's already set up and ready to go. Okay, so just so you understand, here I am looking at the operator and what I, if I'm gonna load up a new MicroTuner, and make this work with operator, I'm gonna drag and drop this microtuner in here, right? Looking over here at the pitch bend area, in order for this to work properly, I go into operator and I go to the global tab, wherever the pitch bend information is, and you can see that the pitch bend is actually set to plus or minus 24 steps. So that's all the higher that operator goes. So I need to go over here and say, okay, pitch bend 24, 
okay? So now this will work with the pitch bend, okay? The range of the pitch bend on any instrument you're using has to match the pitch bend over here. And of course, because the operator is not an MPE device, I need to turn that off. Now, because Wavetable is a polyphonic device, I can send full on chords to Wavetable and each one of those notes will be retuned, okay? because it is an MPE device or a polyphonic MIDI device, right? Now, if you want to play chords with Microtuner, you need to use either Wavetable or a plugin that can accept MPE, okay? Now, I've also hooked it up to other devices that are not MPE, such as Operator and Analog. Now, I, as you can see, I've turned the MPE off on these, right? And you can also see that Microtuner looks different. Well, why is that? That's because they're set to follow mode. If I turn follow mode off and go back to default, we can see our normal controls here, okay? So if I go back to follow though, they're going to follow any microtuner instance that's set to lead, right? So you can see that this microtuner sitting on the wavetable track is set to lead. So that's how you set this up. And what's cool about this is that you could put this before any of the devices you have in Ableton and retune them all together, right? And that's what's so fun about it. So now let's look at how to actually retune something. Before we get into the scale files and all that other stuff, let's just do a really basic, simple way. So I'm on generator B right now. As you can see, my slider is down here and you can, you can reveal the slider by turning on this little button. And now I'm on this generator, so generator B. You can look at the different scales or generators just by clicking back and forth between A and B, right? So now I'm looking at generator B and let's say I wanna generate a scale. One of the easiest ways to do this is to set the pitches to 12, okay? You can just slide this up and down. So I'm setting that to 12, and we're just gonna leave octave one to one right now. And what you can do is you can actually turn the random amount up, and what this will do is it will randomly choose note values and try to divide them across 12 different pitches, okay? So I'll go ahead and click generate, and now you can see that all those little lines have moved. Let's go ahead and take a listen to what the result is. That actually doesn't sound that bad. Commonly, what will happen is you'll generate a random scale and it'll kind of be pretty crazy, especially if you turn random up. So let's turn random up to 40 and take a listen. <laughs> Woo! Pretty wild, right? A little bit, a little bit out. So the first thing I'm gonna recommend to you is that when you're doing the generating of scales, I think this is a great place to start meaning that you take the pitches and you say, okay, I'm gonna have 12 pitches, which is what you're used to using inside of an octave. You're used to equal temperament scales. I'm gonna dial this back down and what I'm gonna recommend is that you go somewhere between 10% and 20%. This will generate a tuning scale that will be still very usable, okay? And it'll, 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 it'll kick your notes out just slightly and it'll give you that sensation of what happens when people sing together, okay? When you have a choir of people and they're singing together, commonly they're slightly out of pitch with each other, just slightly, and that's actually a very pleasing thing and a very human thing. We're very used to hearing that effect. So I'm gonna put this to 15% and generate another scale, and now take a listen. Okay, so you can just keep regenerating different scales until there's something that you like. Now, I wanna show you something else. Back in on the A side, I have a perfectly equal temperament scale. And the way that you do that is you'd set this to 12, you'd set the octave one to one, and then you would set the random to zero. And if you hit generate, it makes a perfectly equal temperament scale. Take a listen to this. Right, so perfect. And then you can blend back and forth between these two scales. So this could be a really dynamic way of adding detuning to your set. You could wait for a different chord and then just blend into a stranger chord just over time. So maybe what we'll do is we'll go to B and we'll generate a pretty wacky tuning right here. So this is definitely out. And I'll just go ahead and solo this wavetable so we can really hear what that sounds like. So you can hear that I'm dynamically changing that tuning. Let's make it a little bit crazier. And of course, this is an automatable parameter. So if I'm looking at my automation, you can see that the blend control is movable. So I can go in here real quick and I'll just unarm the track and I'll go ahead and record some of this automation.
right? And that's a way to add some interest to these chords, right? Just by generating different scales, all right? Now let's look at something else. If you go up to the help view, right? And then you look at your packs, okay? So to view information about all your installed packs, uh, Microtuner is a pack. So if I open this up and I look at Microtuner, there's something really interesting here. If you click on loading and generating scales, there's a Scala tuning file folder that they actually link to with 5,000 different files, right? So if you click on it here, it'll bring you to a page where you can download those scales. And as you can see, the scales have now downloaded on my hard drive. So now in my documents folder, I made a folder called Scala scales and I've put them all in here. So now I can take any of these Scala scales and just drag them and drop them into Microtuner. Now what's cool about the fact that I have all these Microtuners hooked up to each other is that all I have to do is just drag one scale file into here and I can test it on my entire set, right? Or at least all the tonal sounds in my set. So let's go ahead and I'll drag just one of these random ones on here and let's see what happens. Now, something has happened here where you can see that there aren't a full 12 notes on here, right? So <laughs> when we play this, this is gonna be pretty wild. So I'll drag this down and let's listen to this crazy scale file that we've made. <laughs> Obviously this isn't going to work for our music, but there are other Scala files in here that actually will that have 12 notes in them. For example, this BERT 5 scale is an interesting scale where it's taking almost every note and shifting it up slightly, right? Now you can see that everything is getting sharper. So this is an interesting thing. Obviously all the way up, this isn't gonna make sense. Take a listen. But if I take this and I just slightly move it up a little bit, we could get a really interesting effect going. Let's just take a listen to just the wavetable. And what does that sound like to you? To me, that sounds like tape wow and flutter, but I'm controlling the wow and flutter, right? I'm controlling the fact that the tape is <laughs> speeding up and slowing down slightly, right? I just love this effect. Now you might be thinking, well, okay, what's the difference between doing this and just taking the pitch and slightly moving the pitch of everything at once all up and down? Well, the thing is, is that the relationships between these notes is different all the way up as it is all the way down. So each one of these notes are not being retuned, okay, at the same rate. So as you can see, if you, if you re retune this, look, this note is not moving at all, right? Just these other ones are. So this is allowing us to achieve very subtle, but very new sounds with Ableton Live, right? Now let's look at something else. Now I'm gonna go back to the generated scale that I made on this B side, okay? And the way that you do that is you just click on generator, right? Clicking on generator. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna generate a scale that's a little bit more in tune. So maybe like, I'll do a modest 15%. We're gonna generate a new scale, slide it down here, and now we get. I just love the way that sounds. Now, let's talk about something else. I'll get this out of the way. Okay, so let's look at a totally different workflow with Microtuner. I'm just gonna go to this track right here and I'm gonna grab a new instance of Microtuner. And what I wanna do now is I wanna show you a different way of working with Microtuner. Now, th this is a great way to add some Microtune flavor to music that you already have, okay? So the first thing I'll do is I'll disable these clips by hitting zero. And what I wanna do is I wanna show you a really interesting workflow. So if I turn on follow, and I leave the microtuner on this five note scale, and what'll happen is that it's going to retune all the pitches that I play to these five notes, right? So. That's actually a pretty interesting scale, right? But once I get to, I'm playing C, C sharp, D, E flat, and E. But once I play F, I'm now an octave up, okay? Because there's only five notes in a scale. So you can forget what you know about the keyboard, right? When you're only using five notes. But here's a really interesting workflow. If I turn on follow, you'll notice that when I play these notes, it actually moves the position by itself. So you can actually click on this and move it with your mouse if you want to. You can actually type in four and you can go to position four, or you can just simply hit follow and it will follow the notes that you play. Now this is really useful for using Microtuner over existing music that you already have, okay? What you can do is you can use your ear and you can tune each one of the notes of this custom scale to sort of work with your music. And the way that you do that is I'm gonna play this first note and we're gonna play this music and I'm gonna retune each one of these notes. So check this out. Now 
Okay, so that's my first note. Now, I know that's not perfect, but that's the point. The point is that it's not perfect. Let's move on to the next note. Right, now the next note. Now, if you need finer control, you can always hold shift and check it out. When I hold shift, it's a little bit finer of a, of a control over the sense of each tuning. All right, next one. So now I have just one more. Now, I just want to show you something else. You also have full control of this. You can do, you can go the whole circle. So maybe I'll, I'll pull this one lower. Okay, so here's my custom scale. Now that's really interesting to me. I've, I've sort of created a new instrument, if you want to think of it that way. These fixed pitches are very out, but they're very in with the song that I'm using. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to re-enable these clips that I've made of me just kind of playing an arp of these notes and take a listen to this. Now maybe another thing that we could do is instead of doing it that way, I could just play different combinations of these notes as chords. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and record that. And maybe this idea would make more sense if I had more release time. Awesome. So I realize that microtonal music is not for everybody, but for me, I really enjoy the creative potential that exists and just slightly out notes. Again, it's so human of us to enjoy slightly detuned notes. That's why you see on every synthesizer the ability to turn on the unison detune, where it sounds as if you have a choir of people singing a bunch of notes that are slightly out of each other. It just creates a new vibe, right? With Microtuner on Ableton, you're now able to explore this in a totally different way, right? Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this. If you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. Much love, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.